Welcome back everybody and in this session we are going to look at scenes. So I've pre-loaded one of the pre-built um, projects you can use with HeavyM and as you can see it has all of the features in there. So I'm just going to turn the HM off for now. Okay and there's my output and as you can see already is my input. So I can change the scenes already that are there. So the ones that Heavy Emma provided us, I can alter them. So I don't have to build the structure. So this hexagon shape that I've got here, um, if I have the Olga kit, I can build the hexagon shape with the Olga kit and I can just import this and it's good to go. So that's gonna save me um, a little bit of time as I'm working and as I'm making things. And I'm just playing with the effects. And as you can see, if you get a really nice geometric shape like this hexagon, it already looks like it's got depth. So it already looks 3D. So the minute I start adding a repeater and I start adding the lines in, it suddenly looks phenomenal, very, very simply. Now, usually when I'm working with hexagon shapes, I don't add too much color, but I really like this effect. And I'm gonna replicate this in the real world with the Olga kit, which I have. Again, just to reiterate everybody, you don't necessarily need to buy the Olga kit. You can do your own shapes on any kind of surface with heavy M software. It just happens that I already have the Olga kit because I use it in my tutorials anyway. And I actually use it for gallery installations when I'm mapping projects, because as you all know, I use different projection mapping software from heavy M to mad mapper um, and so on and so forth. Okay. So I'm just playing around here with the shapes and all I've done at the bottom is I've clicked the plus icon. So that has given me a new scene. So I'm just going to drag that across again. So as you can see, as I'm adding different effects to our shape here, I'm just I'm going to do these quite quickly just so you, you get a sense of what we're doing because you know how to do this already now, right? You've done these tutorials, so you know how to add effects and you know how to create shapes and, and, and so on and so forth. So I'm just um, going through and just adding different areas in so it, it looks different. And then all I'm doing is at the bottom, as you can see, I'm clicking the plus icon and that's creating a new scene for me. And underneath those little um, squares at the bottom where our scenes are, you'll notice a little play, pause, forward, loop button anyway. Um, and that's where we can control all of these scenes um, and we can add and we can change and we can update, etc. Also note that by default, which is down at the bottom and across to the right, our default time, you can change all of the, the default times yourself. So you can change those to whatever you want, or you can have those sync to music, or you can have them on a specific time and maybe 20 seconds or 30 seconds, etc. So I'm going through this now and I'm just altering it and I'm just changing it and I'm just developing it and just clicking the plus icon to add a new scene. So I'm just gonna speed this up now because you know how to do this, and then we'll come back once we have these scenes loaded in. So I've just speeded this section of the tutorial up because all I'm doing is adding different effects and setting different parameters, which again, as I just previously said, I know you know how to do that. So I'm just gonna import some media, and we've done a tutorial on importing media, but we haven't done a tutorial on importing media to a specific object, so I've pulled my little media icon down and I'm just making sure that covers our whole um, shape. So there we go. I'm just leveling it up a little bit and I've select my media. So I've already imported a few little bits, but here's my alone dance film that I created. So I'm going to click play. And as you notice, that's playing over the whole thing. So can remember early on when that um, icon popped up and I said, oh, don't worry about this. This is just the way you want that to play. So this is now playing as a background feature. So I'm just making sure that covers the whole quad there. And I'm just going to go to my player and I'm just going to move that and just play around with it to see if, see how the layering system affects everything. So that's not affecting anything. But that's all right. So if I go here and I just pop that up there, let's have a look, pop that in there. Yep. So that pops that instantly down to the bottom in that group. And as you can see, that has now changed that. So it's inside of my group there. So although it's showing on top, it's actually laid it so it's inside. So if I just click this icon here, this is where those three things come up. So I can change those. So I can have a new group there, which is um, overridden the group before, which I don't want to do, as you can see. So let me get rid of that. Let me um, all group again. 
there you go. So now what that has done is that has all groups, so that's attached that media to all of those mini quads. So that's now playing inside of that structure, which I think, as you will agree, looks really great. So you can play media on your objects as well. Okay, let's speed the next little bit up because again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add more scenes at the bottom. So guys, what I'm going to do in this section, although it's speeded up, is I'm going to turn some of the faces off. So when I start adding my effects, it'll only affect some of the faces. So that's something you can do really quickly by just turning them off in your layers panel, adding your effects and creating a scene at the bottom. As you'll notice now, I've got two of the triangle faces that are just missing from this installation. So that's another great thing you can do to make it really interesting is you can have faces turn on and turn off. So they don't always need to have media attached to them. So again, I'm just playing with quads and I'm just checking these, turning them on, turning it off, just making sure they all work the way they um, should work or the way, rather I should say, the way I think they work, the way I think they've programmed them. And don't worry about this heavy M logo coming up. That's because we're using the trial version as we saw in the beginning. If you like the software, you can purchase it. I'm not associated with heavy M in any way. So I, I just use the software myself. I don't work for the company and I don't gain anything from you guys getting it. But, you know, try lots of different projection mapping software out. Find one that works for you. You know, they all do different things really well. So I really like Heavy M for doing gallery installations or doing geometric um, installations, for example. But I like other softwares for doing other things. You'll notice that I've speeded this section up again um, because all I'm doing is, is adding quads and things. And I want to get to the point where you can see this. So let's just bring this out full screen. Let's just play this and have a look um, at our mapping. So as you can see, I think that's really interesting. Now I haven't added transitions in yet and I haven't changed the timers of it, but I think you'll agree, really interesting. 